The desolate hellscape known as the Wasteland, stuffed to the brim with many creatures that were dangerous, ugly, and dangerous. Well, at the very least, I suppose I could be happy that I don't live here. <laughs> oh no. Ugh, I forgot. We do live here, and we're trapped inside because of all those death claws. Fine, I'll fight them, but remember, if we die, you guys ask for this. Now then, let's kick some ass. Daddy wasn't playing no games. As soon as we left the vault, we began raining down a thousand bullets upon every Deathclaw that we saw, trying to lead them away from the base. And to my surprise, it was actually working. The death claws were very relentless though. They would continue following us all throughout the thick snow and even across the pond. But we were resilient and we would not waver. The over irradiated lizards would continue giving chase for several hours, but one by one they would fall to our feet. Not all of these great beasts had been killed though from our bullets, so we would have to go around and begin finishing them off one by one. Oh, how the tables have turned. 50 days ago, we were hiding inside from two of these, but now we can take down an entire pack. We are now top of the food chain. Speaking of food, these death claws will also make a nice addition to our storage of rotted meat. And better yet, young Cosme can finally sleep sound at night knowing that she won't be eaten by a death claw. Well, for now. I also had Hall begin working diligently on several different types of research because we were gunning it, no pun intended, for gun turrets. And of course we were also working on the never-ending quest of expanding our vault even further. This time around I wanted to make room for a workshop and of course this is going to take a lot of resources, mainly steel of course as most of the vault tech requires steel to be built, the flooring, the walls, every last little bit of it, but that's okay because we had plenty still on the map. We also ended up having some drop pods drop in some vault tech meals which was very strange as we thought we were the only vault dweller maybe somebody raided one I don't know I don't know where they were going or who sent them but they're ours now as we were putting the finishing touches on our beautiful workshop we ended up having a little bit of bad news we have a talk spare hunting storage and that is a problem for us so we would promptly begin turning it into Swiss cheese which of course we succeeded in doing after murdering a bear in cold blood, Storch would spend quite a bit of time actually making some stone blocks that we could use for some little construction projects here and there. But this too, unfortunately, would be rudely interrupted by a raid from the Axemen, nothing more than a small group of ragtag wannabe raiders. Also, we finished up research for gun turrets, I didn't want to leave that part out. Anyhow though, in a twisted, ironic turn of events, one of these raiders actually turned out to be Hall's son. <sighs> Always sad when you have to slaughter one of your loved Loved ones, but when duty calls, those damn dirty raiders would waste no time coming at us like a bunch of spider monkeys high on methamphetamine and or maybe Adderall, I'm not really sure, but they managed to take Jim down quite quickly and unfortunately Hall wasn't very far behind. Now it was only up to Storch to save the day. I thought it might be best to play a little game of whack-a-mole with the raiders here, but as we went back inside out of their line of sight, they decided to try and kidnap Jim and Hall. Luckily though, Storch was pretty quick and didn't let this happen. And just like that, several hours after it had began, the raid was finally over and our friends were saved and they were finally safe and sound. Well... That's not exactly true, as they were bleeding from several holes in their body that actually weren't supposed to be there. But not to worry, Storch would patch them up as best that he could, and they didn't die, so that's what's important. Some time later, and everyone was feeling right as rain, except for Hall, who was so upset about her injury, she began cursing out Jim any chance she got. A very risky move since Jim is the overseer, but I suppose Hall has balls of steel. Speaking of steel, Jim would end up using some along with some components to make a mini mini turret backpack. Essentially what this is, it's a mini version of the mini turret that we carry around with us and it actually fires at enemies automatically. And thus it should come in very handy. A bit of time later and we ended up having a trade caravan stop in, the type of trade caravan that partakes in trading humans, if you know what I mean. Anyhow, we ended up buying someone by the name of Quieter who was a waster. We traded quite a bit of our insect jelly and advanced components for him, but he had a really good construction 
construction, mining, planting, and crafting skills, so he was well worth it. And of course, wasters are the perfect race to thrive in this shithole that we call home. Speaking of which, since our workshop is consuming a little bit more electricity now, we are going to be building more Toxifier generators. Additionally, we would also end up digging out a small bedroom in the workshop, that way Quieter has a nice place to rest his head. I also ended up capturing a very nice aerial view of our home, our beautiful vault, and I think it looks pretty spectacular thus far. A bit of time later and we would actually end up working on our mini turrets. Finally, some automated defenses around here so that we don't have to constantly risk our necks in a fight. We would even get to test them out that night on a tox bear. You poor dumb bastard. You may have survived the nuclear bombs that dropped on this land hundreds of years ago, but you won't survive us. Finally, we would end up finishing all of our mini turrets, and now we're defended on our eastern and western sides. With day 25 just around the corner though, I thought it could be best if we added some additional spike traps to our defenses, that way if they get a little too close, there's a high chance that they'll end up catching a piece of marble in their chest cavity. Late one dark, smoggy evening, we ended up having a weapons trader stop in by the vault, and I was expecting them to have nothing but pipe weapons, but to my surprise, they actually had a pretty decent Gatling laser Cannon. Now we spent a lot of money on this, so I hope it's worth it. <laughs> Oh, I think that'll do just fine. Or at least I sure hope so, because it looks like we're being raided by a bunch of ghouls that are dropping in drop pods all over the map. I don't know how these leather skin freaks got a hold of any drop pods, but I don't really care. The only thing I care about is spilling their blood, which is a favorite pastime of ours and something that we're damn good at. After seeing Jim barbarically crush a ghoul head like a watermelon, the others that were still alive began to run away. Can't say I blame them, truthfully. A good bit of time later, and we finally finished up our extensive research into flak armor. Now, I know what you're thinking, Rat Daddy. Flak armor, what a frivolous, silly thing to be researching. Why would you even care about such a thing? Well, my good friends, let me tell you. With research of flak armor, we're actually able to begin working on our very own power armor. Now, this is some raider power armor. As far as I'm aware, this is all we unlock with the flak armor research, but it is better than the tainted power armor that we currently have. One, because it gives a pretty big mood debuff, and two, because it's already extremely damaged. With day 25 literally about to happen, I knew I wouldn't have enough time to create a power armor helmet, unfortunately, so I went with something a little different. This is a winterized military helmet, and it does offer an okay bit of protection, definitely not compared to the power armor helmet, and it does look a little silly, but I don't know, I like it. But my friends, just like that, it is now day 125, which means it's time for a boss battle, but I think Jim is going to be sitting this one out as she's currently going through a mental break, unfortunately. There was a little bit of a problem with this boss battle. Immediately after they spawned in, Quieter was stuck out there with them. But let's at least take a look at who he's fighting. My friends, you are currently looking at the last remaining remnants of the Chinese army that stood before the nuclear bombs fell upon the planet. Oh, and uh, also they've enslaved a sentient death claw that wields a massive concrete and steel thing. All right, well, Quieter is in quite the pickle, but we do have to do this. We would immediately try to fake out the massive Deathclaw by running towards it and then trying to run in the opposite direction. And in the beginning, I would say that it was working quite well. We were making our way back towards the base, towards the others, but they caught up with us. Quieter would do his best to fight back, but I had forgot to equip him with a better melee weapon and he was surrounded, thus he fell which was no bueno. Lucky for us, the others had arrived and they started beating those ghoul lasses like a drum, even taking down their death claw. We would have to ensure that we stayed on the move though because we were still severely outnumbered. By this point though, the ghouls had decided to steal what they could and kidnap who they could and try to leave the area. But luckily, as one was packing off quieter, he sprang back to life. I knew that he was too damaged to beat a ghoul in melee combat though, so I just tried to get him the hell out of the area as fast as I could. Luckily, his power arm or kept him safe from many of the bullets. One of those ghoulish bastards was trying to carry Hall off, but Storch wasn't about to allow that one bit. And just like that, the raid had essentially totally ended. Now we had to begin tending to our wounded, ensuring that Hall doesn't bleed to death as well as quieter. Luckily though, Jim had snapped out of her mental break so she could chip in a little. Oh, you poor, dumb, sweet, succulent, sexy Deathclaw. You had no idea. You never stood a chance from the very beginning 
beginning. Now though, with that finally taken care of, we could get back to business per usual around the vault. Of course though, we're going to have to take a few days to really heal up from that massive battle and just kind of relax ourselves and, you know, maybe have a good time. Even enjoy each other's company and sharpen our minds with a quick game of chess or two. I also noticed that during the battle, it would appear that Quieter ended up losing his right arm, which is a little bit of a problem. Just as well, he has a deficiency in his Psychite dependency, so we're gonna have to whip up some tea for him. As I was looking into growing some Psychoid leaves, that way we can make some Psychite tea, I noticed that our Toxifier generators were actually polluting the inside of the vault, which was killing out a lot of our plants in the hydroponics basin, so I would have to deconstruct these, and I was going to try something a little bit different, which ended up maybe not being the best of ideas. I decided that I wanted to replace these generators with some solar panel generators instead. I would end up building about four of these, and I know what you're thinking, that's probably not a great idea because we have this toxic smog always in the air, that's actually going to cause maybe some visibility issues and blah 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 blah, and I totally agree, so uh, later on you'll see I added some more Toxifier generators just a little bit farther from the vault with our solar panels. And at first I did think that I was a complete fool as there was no power, but eventually as the day continued we ended up having all of our power restored thankfully. But now that we can ensure the lights are going to be staying on without any issues, I wanted to do a little bit of trading. Now originally this trade mission was going to be to go out and find a bionic or prosthetic arm for Quieter, but it really didn't matter even if I found one eventually I realized that because Quieter is the only one that could actually install one, so we just ended up selling some of our goods to them for a little bit of silver. Back home I decided to build a pollution pump, that way we could try and pump out all of the sewage that we've been flooding our warehouse and our hydroponics rooms with, and I would also have Jim begin constructing yet another mini gun turret backpack. This time around it would actually be for Quieter. Since he's missing an arm and he's not going to do so hot in terms of shooting, I thought he could use a little bit of help. But then we had some visitors and I had something nefarious in mind. There were only about four of them and we could really kill them if we wanted to and one of them had some pretty decent looking stats so I thought, ah what the hell, maybe we just try to arrest them and force them into being our friend. Unfortunately, they didn't like this and they tried to fight back and so we had to kill several of the visitors and unfortunately we also ended up killing the one that we were trying to capture. However, another of the caravan members was not so lucky as to die and they were only incapacitated. I suppose we'll just have to take them, even though their stats don't appear to be near as good, they're still pretty decent. The only place currently we could really designate as a makeshift prison would be Jim's overseer office, so we threw stop in here and started tending to their wounds, but unfortunately they would end up getting a pretty bad infection, so we were going to have to try to take care of that as soon as possible. Just as well as digging out and constructing a small room for them to stay in for the time being as well, but unfortunately this room would not be nice enough to stop the infection. And so, because the infection was raging on, I decided to try and harvest Stomp's stomach. But the problem being there, of course, as I mentioned earlier, Quieter only has one arm and he is our best doctor and this caused us to fail and so basically stop ended up dying. Womp womp. Well, I guess me attacking those visitors was completely useless and it didn't work out at all. But, uh, uh, oopsie daisy? Well, we may not have a new friend, but I'll tell you what we currently do have. We currently have friendship with the friends that we have. And you know what I love doing with the friends that we currently have? I love ever expanding our vault. So we would actually end up expanding our warehouse as well. We are an up and coming faction with a very up and coming base, thus, we need more storage. A bit of time later and we actually had a quest from yet another faction who offered to drop some waste packs off in our area in exchange for a ranged shield belt as well as 24 gold so we very very quickly accepted I mean we live in a wasteland a little bit of waste packs won't really matter and as you can see we ended up getting our items quite promptly and all of our waste packs and you know okay that might be a little more than I expected but this shield belt is well worth it this is no normal shield belt this one actually allows you to shoot while wearing it, which is a little bit different than the standard vanilla shield belts, of course. But you know, ever since our loss of our good 
companion wall, our Mr. Gusty, there's been a void in my heart that only a robot could feel, so I've decided to craft a scrap bot. He's not exactly wall or a Mr. Gusty at all, but he is still a robot and we do very much love him, so we're going to be calling him Scrappy. Scrappy here was built for most mundane basic tasks like hauling things and things of that sort of course, but he could smash a head or two if he really wanted. And believe me when I say, he wants to. Now for some time, not really too much was going on, we decided that we would go out and try to trade with some more outlanders, possibly looking for another bionic or prosthetic arm in the hopes that we end up getting someone who joins us who has a really good medical skill, and this did end up taking quite a while. On the way home though, we ended up getting ambushed. At first, after seeing them, I thought, well, we could handle three bandits and or raiders quite easily, but it turns out one of them has some T-51 power armor, so we're going to have to try a little harder. We would do our best to take cover behind some rocks, but unfortunately the bandit wearing the power armor would try to chase us down with a massive uranium warhammer to slam our heads with it. Thankfully though, he was quite slow and we managed to blast him into oblivion. And the best part perhaps was the fact that he was still alive, so we could actually strip him, take the power armor without it being tainted, kill him, and then we would have Storch wear it. This new power armor will offer a lot of protection and looks very bougie. Not all of the bandits ended up dying though in fact one of them survived so we would end up tending to their wounds so we could take them back home to recruit them. Some time later we finally arrived all the way back home to do just as we said. The bandit was a handsome young lady by the name of Jolie or Jolly. Either way she's got some pretty good skills and is one hell of a fighter so we were happy to have her. Ah another job well done. How do you do it quieter? Now there's a few items I've been keeping a secret since we went out to trade with the outlanders. I wanted to surprise you we ended up buying Jim some type of electronic or plasma based shield as well as a cataphrac helmet. Yes, yes, I do realize it's not exactly Fallout themed, but I would make the argument that in Fallout, of course, you take whatever you can get, uh, you know, whatever upgrade there is, and that's very Fallout themed. And just as well, she can only wear it up until we find her some nice power armor or something, anyhow. But, my friends, it is now day 150, and you know just as well as I know that means it's time for yet another boss battle. Now, I won't lie to you, I was a little bit perplexed what we should go with in terms of a boss battle for day 150, but I decided to go with a whole squad of super mutants. A bunch of vicious, massive, tough, humanoid, green mutant monsters who are armed to the absolute teeth. We would of course rush outside to our defensive positions to try and fight them off as they begin surrounding our base from each side. We were very quickly enveloped by all of the super mutants and they were making making their way through our defenses, one of them with a doomsday rocket launcher caused some issues. With Scrappy on the ground and our turrets gone, Jim was the only one defending our eastern side, so I began bringing the others over. And with their assistance, we would finally be able to make the remaining super mutants flee the area, with many of them dying at our traps and the others being blasted into hell. Just like that, we'd finally won the battle with minimal casualties, except for poor Scrappy who was severely injured, and of course our turrets are gone, but those can be easily replaced and we'll try to begin repairing poor Scrappy here as best we can. We would also begin cleanup efforts by going around stripping and finishing off any of these green abominations that we found just before finally tending to our own people. And of course part of the cleanup efforts were repairing our turrets, our power lines and walls, anything else that was damaged and or destroyed. However the brief moment of peace would not last for very long as we now have a siege from the Axeman. These filthy raiders are getting some equipment from their drop pods back home and they plan on bombing the absolute ship shit out of us, I suppose. Not exactly ideal. Thankfully though, they don't have the best eyesight, so we managed to survive the first volley without issue. Since it would take a very long time to wait on them to come to us, we decided to attack them preemptively as they were preparing more mortar rounds. We decided to try and hide behind some small hills where we could take cover. And this was going okay, I guess. Unfortunately, Jim was taken down very quickly, but we managed to grab her and take her to safety. As the raiders came around the corners, we would quickly burn them down to a crisp. And eventually, we had done this so much that the 
the remaining few were scared shitless and decided to try and run away from the area. Can't say I really blame them, if you ask me. Of course, though, we were victorious once more. Now, I will say I wasn't exactly pleased that the siege had happened, but we were in the middle of researching mortars, and now we don't really have to complete that research anymore, as we could just take these artillery cannons that the bastards had brought with them. And, I mean, come on, a few artillery cannons and nobody died? I mean, sure, they done quite a bit of extensive damage to the base, but we were already in the middle of repairing it anyhow, so really no harm, no foul. Some time later, we actually had an item stash that wasn't too far from the vault, so we'd send out a few of our people to go and investigate things. Now, back home, though, we would actually keep Scrappy, our young Cosme, as well as Quieter. Obviously, Cosme would need to stay behind because she's just a young child and could easily be killed out there, and Scrappy would stay behind to protect her. By any means necessary. Now, he may not look like much, but believe you me, Scrappy has seen things that you could not imagine. So yeah, you could say that Cosme is in pretty good hands back at the vault. And of course, adding on to that, Quieter is also here with his massive laser gatling gun, but he's mostly just here to try and continue recruiting our prisoner known as Jolie or Jolly or whatever I'm going to call her. Some time later though, the others had finally arrived at the item stash and there was hardly any threat inside except for some rad scorpions that immediately began chasing us down and trying to sting us. As one might imagine, our natural response to this was to immediately began pulling the trigger every time we had it in our sights, and this was doing okay, I guess, but these rad scorpions had a very hard insectoid armor. So strong, in fact, that we might even be impressed if we weren't too busy running, trying not to take a stinger in the old arse. Something that unfortunately did happen to Hall, but luckily shortly thereafter, Storch and Jim finished off the remaining rad scorpion, and we were safe. Once the threat was neutralized, we managed to get into the item stash, and there wasn't too much of interest here, really except for plenty of plasteel, some normal steel, and some silver, as well as some other junk. Now it's time for us to begin heading back to the vault, but before we do so, we're going to do some trading. Speaking of the vault, though, Quieter had finally managed to recruit Jolie into our ranks, and of course she began equipping some nice armor and weapons, and boy, doesn't she look splendid. A perfect, expendable soldier, some might say. I would say. Anywho's, we're now going to be doing some trading with the Outlanders here. We ended up just selling them a bunch of stuff that we didn't need, and really the only thing worth noting that we bought was some plasteel. During this time, we would have Quieter work on a project that was long overdue, a Raider Power Armor Helmet finally finishing off his set, and of course providing much more needed protection for his noggin. He also looks much more intimidating like this, which was also a big plus. Finally though, some time had passed and Jim and the others had returned home with all of their goodies that they had received from the mission to the item stash as well as their trading. Specifically, the plasteel was was of note as previously mentioned. Now this plasteel was something that I was looking for intentionally. I was actually going to use it to create yet another robot. This time around we're not building a scrap bot though, no. We are actually building a Protectron unit. The Protectron unit being a very protective, handsome, and strong young lad by the name of Sergei. He was of course much more advanced than our scrap bot and much more defensive than our Mr. Gusty of the past. He actually had three different types of laser weapons installed after creation. He was quite the powerhouse. Not only that, but he actually made for a pretty good colonist, having a good mining, cooking, and an okay social and animal skill as well. Now that we have a walking, talking set of laser guns roaming around the vault, I thought it might be fitting for us to build our very first prison. Thus far, we've only been using any room that we can find and turning it into a makeshift prison, essentially, so this will be a big step up. Notably, of course, I'm not building this on the inside, of the vault, mostly because, well, I just didn't want to. Something else I did want to build on the outside of our base, though, were some additional turrets as well as spike traps to kind of help try and protect those turrets as best that we could, of course, just in case we have any pesky raiders who need their brains stomped out of their head. Oh, would you look at that? Speak of the devil! Looks like we have some unusually clever raiders that are coming from the Axeman, and one of them just so happens to be the auntie of our scavenger gunner, Jolie. Now, thankfully for us, we got lucky enough that their pods were going haywire, and these sons of bitches were landing in random spots all over the map, making it quite easy to pick them off. Of course, that wouldn't stop them from linking up with their comrades that had landed nearby and surrounding our base. Eventually, though, this really didn't matter in the grand scheme of 
things as we killed enough of them that they began to run away. And we were doing our very best to take out what remaining few were running away as we could. It was just our luck though that two or three of them had been incapacitated just outside our walls. The perfect type of people that we could make into prisoners, except one of them ended up dying, but that's okay. We still have two of them, I suppose. Oh, actually, I just realized that two of them died. Well, at least we have one. Now, while we're still kind of vaguely on the topic of capturing people who don't want to be our prisoners, we had an enclave scientist and their bodyguard visiting, and I decided that I really liked their stats, and so I tried to arrest them. They put up a pretty good fight for the most part, but in the end, unfortunately, I'm afraid they succumbed to our charm. Not to worry though, my future friends will take good care of you here. It was also around about this point that I realized that Scrappy was missing his left leg mount and his right leg, unfortunately, meaning he couldn't move at all. I'm not sure when this happened, nor am I really sure when we'll have the parts or the ability to fix him. But nevertheless, my friends, time moves on and we are now finally at day 175 three quarters of the way there I might add this time around for the boss battle it would appear that the enclave have come back to try and retrieve their prisoners that we well took prisoner along with them is a general many soldiers and two power armor wielding massive people. <laughs> I'm not sure what to call them. Nevertheless, though, regardless of terminology, they quickly engulfed our walls and began firing upon our turrets. And our turrets, God bless their little souls, would attempt to put up a decent fight, as well as our spike traps, but none of them seemed to be able to take down these massive, marauding, armored sons of bitches. This looks like a job for our massive, armored sons of bitches, like Quieter and Storch, who are gonna beat this bastard into pulp on the ground. Which was actually a lot harder than I make it sound like. We even had to have help from Sergei, but eventually we did end up beating him down and we would have to move on to the next one. For this Enclave soldier, we would focus more heavily on our ranged weapons so that we didn't get beat to death, and luckily we ended up taking them both out, and the other soldiers were killed on the western side of our walls, and I forgot to get footage of that, but trust me, they're dead. Now, I will say the best part about these fellas here is that we didn't actually kill them, and so we could strip them and take their power armor without it being tainted before we killed them. Now normally with boss battles, and I haven't been doing it in the first 100 days or these 200 days, I will put a death acidifier in the bosses to keep this from happening, but I don't know, I really wanted to not do that this time around. And yes, the argument could be made that that's a little bit cheaty of me to do that because now we have four of our people with this massive, amazing, awesome power armor and yeah, I would, I would agree with that, but uh, I don't know, look how good they look. I'm so proud of how our vault dwellers, kind of vault dwellers, are really coming along here under Jim. Besides, killing people in this super cool armor is a lot better than killing people not wearing this power armor, so there's that. Since we have so many prisoners at the moment, I thought it might be best if we went ahead and preemptively began getting them some housing ready, some dwellings for them to sleep in, of course, so we began expanding the vault out further to add on three Three brand new adequate, albeit small, bedrooms just next to Jim's overseer office. They were nothing too special and nothing more than the bedrooms that we had already built, but they were a soft place to lay their heads at night. The only thing is, it was about this time that I realized that we're missing our third prisoner. We only have two of the three that we had about ten minutes ago. And I found his corpse. It turns out that he died from extreme toxic buildup, which I found a little bit strange because checking the other prisoners, nobody else was having this issue. So I don't know if he had that when we first imprisoned him or what, but apparently he's dead. I suppose we'll just have to make do with the two that we have. Some time later, we had Quieter getting hunted by a very large death claw, but this time around the tables had turned with Quieter's brand new power armor that he has on. The death claw could barely even make a scratch and eventually it ended up getting wasted. Oh my scaly massive lizard friend, the tables have truly turned. You are now the prey and we are the predators. No longer having to hunt you down in groups, we could take you on one on one. Some time passed and we ended up having yet another quest from the same faction requesting to drop off some toxic sludge in the area in exchange for an infinite chem fuel reactor as well as 333 silver, so I accepted. I thought that the chem fuel reactor would be great because generating chem fuel, we could sell said chem fuel and make more money, of course. The only problem is we're pretty close to a 200 
100 days here, and I kind of forgot that these take a while. It actually takes about 10 days to make any chem fuel, so that's okay, I guess. Something else that took quite a while, though, but was finally finished was us finishing up recruiting both of our two prisoners that we currently had, and they finally joined our ranks as vault dwellers. Naturally, we gave them some pretty sweet weaponry and armor to commemorate them joining us here today, and also to keep them from dying from several bullet holes, of course. One of the many occupational hazards that come with the job, I'm afraid. Now that we finally recruited the prisoner known as Lamp, who has a comparable medical skill to that of Quieter, we would also complete a prosthetic arm, that way Lamp could implant this onto Quieter. Of course, it was nothing compared to Bionics, but it was something, and of course the surgery went down quite well, and now Quieter has manipulation that isn't exactly 100%, but it's much better than it was, that's for sure. Whatever helps him aim his minigun a little bit better, I'll take it. With day 100 just around the corner, though, I really wanted to try and put a focus on defenses. Now, we don't have all that much really research still, unfortunately. I never did build a high-tech research bench, so we could try and look into auto cannons or anything of that sort, like I probably should have. But the old spike traps and mini turrets seem to be working thus far, along with our fire support from our people, so that's what we're going to rely on. Along with that, though, we're also going to be building some mini turret backpacks for every single vault dweller that we currently have under our vault ceiling. That way, not only do we have our mini turrets on the ground, but we're also packing some around with us at all times. These mini turret backpacks don't exactly provide a lot of firepower, but at times when our people are busy trying to reload their weapons or something along those lines, they do come in very handy at providing cover fire for them, especially in these high intense situations like boss battles. Normally though, in our last few days in these videos, I never really know what to do, nor is there really ever too much to do because I always focus on defenses and then I always find myself with a little bit of spare time. So I decided that I would build everyone in the vault a nice little recreation room. That way they could spend some quality time together before the 200 days were up. Maybe sit around and eat some home cooked meals or possibly some insect jelly or perhaps you guys might rather sit around and watch a little bit of television together. Not really sure what they're watching. Maybe some old DVDs from before the nukes dropped? Well, either way, time waits for no one, and day 200 is finally upon us. We have finally achieved yet another 100 days in our Fallout universe here, my friends. This time around, the boss battle was once again the Enclave, but it was a familiar face, Ben, from our first 100 days, who was enslaved by Jim originally, has joined the Enclave and has apparently returned for revenge. We would very quickly run to our defenses to begin preparations to fight off this powerful threat. This is it, my friends, the final battle. Godspeed, Vault Dwellers. Godspeed. Even young Cosme here would take up arms to try and protect Scrappy as well as Scab in their little room here. If things get bad enough, she very well may be our last line of defense. But before we knew it, the Enclave were on us as fast as lightning, easily soaking up our bullets and our lasers like they were nothing. They could only keep this up for so long though before the armor completely broke and we hit the soft center that is their little flesh, searing it perfectly. The second Marauder would approach from the eastern side, destroying one of our turrets very easily and for the most part completely avoiding our spike traps. We refused to let them prevail though, we essentially had an entire firing squad pointed right at them and eventually they would fall as well. This one in particular had a doomsday rocket launcher that we thought would be perfect to use against the remaining foe, Ben. I'm sad to say that it actually wasn't all that effective, but all our bullets and lasers sure were, and eventually we killed him too, finally. Well, I suppose Ben won't be getting that sweet revenge that he was looking for after all. What a shame. But my friends, we have finally done it. Surviving for 200 days in Fallout in RimWorld. I want to thank you guys ever so much for watching. I want to thank you guys for supporting the very first video, the first 100 days there. This definitely wouldn't have happened uh, here if that, uh, that video hadn't done so well well and you guys hadn't loved it so much so of course I just want to express my gratitude I really enjoy doing this and so we may end up going for 300 days at some point as well or at least I hope we do have the new anomaly DLC and the uh, 1.5 update coming out so it'll probably be sometime after that of course but I love you guys ever so much and I hope to see you next time I hope you have a wonderful day goodbye